الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره ونستعينه ونستغفره نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما We bear witness we praise God Almighty for all that he has given us everything comes from his mercy his sustenance and his power we ask for his guidance we thank him for everything including the tests that he has given us to make us stronger muslims stronger mu'mins stronger muhsins stronger in speaking the truth stronger in striving for his cause and we gather on this jumma for that purpose to remember and remind each other the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran al-Karim and the sunnah of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we bear witness that there's no god but the one god and that Muhammad is the servant and messenger of god and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to shower his blessings on the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam on his family on the companions and on all who follow his footsteps when we talk about freedom there is this play this game of if you want your freedom then you have to obey the authority and definitely we should have order and we should obey especially when we're obeying from an authority that is establishing justice but there are two things that we have to remember first of all our freedom does not come from any human being our freedom comes from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we say la ilaha illa allah there is no god no pharaoh no person no king no general that i will submit to because i only submit to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore all my actions start from that very significant point how i achieve freedom by connecting to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when governments when authorities when any groups align with that we align with it as well it says obey god and his messenger and those with whom are entrusted authority that's from the quran directly and we are a peaceful loving orderly establishing ummah ummatan wasata that we have made you into an umma of the middle way in other words we are not going to go to the far left we're not going to go to the far right we are right up we're, we're going right through in the a middle way in terms of what is good for as many people as possible and establishing common ground but we have to remember then when we have this thing called the constitution of the united states and it says Congress shall make no law respecting in respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievance this did not this did not come from human beings this came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those principles it is human beings who aligned with those principles that put it ink on paper and now it is up to us people to make sure that our government align with what they commit to and that is freedom freedom of speech which gives us freedom of religion and throughout the quran we read stories of those who came and says i i submit to no god but the one god and that person was persecuted every prophet was persecuted for saying that so that is an example of freedom of speech where the prophets came and said we declare that there's no god but the one god 
And as the Quran also says in Surah Al-Kahf, which is chapter 18, verse 29, whoever wills, let him believe, and whoever wills, let him disbelieve. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمَنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ So that freedom to choose comes from God Almighty. We establish the freedom, we invite to the way of God, and then we let people choose. And in fact, the Quran also tells the Prophet himself that he cannot compel people to believe if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never compelled people to, leave, to believe. So by extension, we have no compulsion in matters of, of faith. La akraha fiddin, chapter 2, verse 256. And lakum dinukum waliya deen. To you be your religion, and to me be my religion. So all this is, is found in the Quran, and therefore, what do we do when we see falsehood? We speak out against it. We are shuhada lillah. Ya ladina amnu kunu qawamina bil qisti. Shuhada lillah, walau ala anfusikum walidi wal akrabin. So we are bearing witness to the truth. That is our mandate. And we practice the truth, as it says in Surah Al Asr, wa tawasu bil haq. We practice together mutually the enjoyment and the advancement of what is true. So this notion that freedom came in 1776 or 1789 is a false premise. Our freedom comes from God. And for Muslims, they established a great civilization. There was that demise and now we find so many Muslims here in the West. And, and to us, we go wherever there is security. So if we're secure here, this is the land of Islam. We, do, we, we bow down to no monarchy, no government in the Middle East. Uh, we bow down only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if the government leaders of today are calling themselves a democracy, they should act like one. And sometimes these governments act in the interest of the people or they act against the interests of the people. And we have to say when they act against the interest of the people, they're acting against God-given rights. And the hadith that you all know that says when you see an evil, you change it with your hand. If you can't change it with your hand, your, your voice. And if you can't, then at least abhor it, abhor it in your hearts. That's the least of all fates. We do what we can to change that. And so now we see students throughout America protesting the evil that is being committed in the name of this country with tax dollars and calling it freedom when this is against freedom. We see students bearing witness to the truth. We see students acting upon their conscience. We see students who have been trained in school. There are heroes throughout history who stood up for the truth and they were persecuted, but it's important to stand up for the truth. They are standing up for the truth. We see students following the lines of all the prophets and they are being targeted and punished and taken their first amendment rights away. And so it gives us pause as Muslims to think about what is happening, especially when it comes to the issue of why these students are protesting to begin with, and that's because of Palestine. So now, all the, the things that we've been watching in the news with the students and what happened to them, and they're being kicked out, it's all for Palestine. Palestine now is front and center an American issue. So I wanna tell the students, you may think it's a bad thing, but it is a good thing. There was this valedictorian at USC, a Muslim, Ansa Tabassum. She practiced, uh, she, she got her degree in bio biomedical engineering and genocide resistance. And because she supported the Palestinian issue, she was canceled. She may think it's a bad thing, but it's a good thing because now Asna Tabassum, instead of speaking to a a couple thousand students at USC, she's now speaking to millions of people 
and they know that she was canceled because of the Palestinian issue. And that the silencing is going on, even though we are a society that believes in the First Amendment free speech issue. They, the Muslims are, the, the Mu'mans are those who enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong. The hypocrites are those who enjoin what is wrong and forbid what is right. And that is what is playing out front and center to us, brothers and sisters. So I attended some of these protests. I went to four universities, George Washington, Vanderbilt, USC, UCLA. And what the media reports about these protests is a big lie. It is a falsehood. They are peaceful. In fact, in one of these protests, I went to speak to the students. Next to them, four young ladies are taking pictures of their, grad, uh, their graduation. So how much more peaceful can you get than that? And other people are walking around. They're just the students who are protesting are saying, we do not want our money that is invested by this university to go and support apartheid, racist, genocidal policies by the state of Israel. What is wrong with that? I can curse the United States government. I can curse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, astaghfirullah and say this is First Amendment. But you criticize the state of Israel, all of a sudden, the First Amendment is thrown out the window. All of a sudden, international law is thrown out the window. All of a sudden, human rights is thrown out the window. So we have to show the truth and speak our conscience and claim our freedom. That doesn't come from any human being or any government or any authority, it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let me stress, these protests are peaceful. They say, well, you know, there could be vandalism. Or, you know, the, uh, some students could get abused and assaulted. Well, first of all, when you go to a football game, there are more assaults and vandalism and disorderly conduct because people are drunk than any of these peaceful protests. So are you going to go and cancel football games? No. So end the hypocrisy, please spare us. Don't insult our intelligence by saying it's a security issue. Number two, yes, it's a security issue when these students are attacked by pro-Israel agitators as they were at UCLA. And then the police stand back and do nothing. And then the next day the police come in and they kick out all the pro-Palestinian protesters. And then the second day, they arrest 60 students for quote unquote unlawful assembly. This is not the America of free speech and free exercise and Congress not making any law that abridges our free exercise. This is slipping into authoritarianism and we have to speak out uh, uh, against that. So brothers and sisters, we have a challenge before us and we have a way of addressing this issue and it is not going to be a short uh, 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 phase in, in fighting for rights of people. Let me stress, this is peaceful. And so when you, see, when you hear anybody saying, oh, let's go and, and, and do something uh, violent, you have to think this is not coming from us. This is coming from outside, usually a saboteur that's coming to ruin the whole objective of these peaceful protesters. You recall, there was a guy named Craig Montiel. He went to the mosque in Irvine and he said, let's go and fight the United States government. Let's get arms and do that. And so the, the mosque reported him to the FBI. Later, it turned out he was working for the FBI. So we know the game. We're not going to be fooled anymore. So let us remember then, we are on the right side of history here. We have to make sure it stays pure and peaceful. They will try to derail us in any way. It's not working. They tried to pin this uh, terrorist attack uh, in Moscow on Muslims. It didn't work. Now everybody knows this has nothing to do with Islam or Muslims. 
it has to do with God knows what it is. We'll find out on Yom Al-Qiyamah, inshallah, when we find the truth, because nobody is telling us the truth today. We met with the mayor and the police and the city attorney about these issues this week, and we demanded answers. I have to say, at this, to this point, which is not unexpected, we have no answers that are sufficient yet. But we will continue to fight for the rights of the students and the rights for all of us to maintain our freedoms that comes from God. And therefore, as Martin Luther King said, we see people who care more about order than justice. We should continue working for justice, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. As I said, we have met with uh, the police and the mayor and the city attorney, and we met with other officials, and we met with the sheriff, and, and we, have we, we have submitted our grievance, which is another constitutional right that is in the United States. Uh, bylaws called the Constitution. And we will continue to press. We also submitted a complaint to the Department of Justice and the Department of Education. And one small step, but still it's a positive step, alhamdulillah, that now the, the Department of Education has launched an investigation of the UCLA uh, leaders and the police department for what happened to the students at UCLA. So we will continue to press in any way that we can to ensure the rights and to protect our students and to hold our police force accountable to us. They're supposed to protect and serve us, not protect and serve a foreign government called the state of Israel to come and repress us because we are articulating what is right. That is the issue in a nutshell, brothers and sisters. So after this khutbah, I want you to stay for a few minutes because we have the president of the Muslim Students Union of USC with us today. He is going to be the president for next year, inshallah. He has remained strong and faithful to the cause. Alhamdulillah, we are all proud of him as we are proud of all of our students. Uh, and he will say a few words. One thing I forgot to mention, by the way, they're trying to push this anti-Semitism law in, uh, in the Congress. If they pass an anti-Semitism law in the Congress, the first thing they need to look at is the Bible because of what it says. So don't give us this lecture about not being anti-Semites. Number two, most of the protests, not most, but a significant number of protesters are American Jews themselves because they do not see what Israel is doing aligned with their Jewish values, with what they believe God gave the Jewish people. So don't give us this thing that this is uh, uh, an Arab Muslim issue of being anti-Semitic and you have to stop this on the campus. That is a falsehood. This movement is multifaceted, is multi-faith, is multi-ethnic, multi-racial, Everybody's being involved. So first and foremost, let us learn the truth before we accept anything. And I think we all know we can't, expect, we can't accept anything from the media anyway. So we should hear directly from our student, and he will be here to speak to us after the, the prayer, inshallah. Oh, Allah, thank you for bringing us today on this Juma. Please give us strength at this time of calamity. Oh Allah, please maintain the purity of our hearts so that we can think clearly about what we do. Oh Allah, please continue to establish firmness in our footsteps and steadfastness for your cause. Oh Allah, please protect our students who are at the front lines of speaking to the truth and being shuhada for you, witnesses for you to the people of this country. Oh Allah, please protect our mosques as the center where we can gather peacefully and think critically 
and plan for the betterment of the future of Islam in America. Oh Allah, please bring justice to those who are oppressed, whether Palestinian or Kashmiri or Uyghur or anyone in the Muslim world or anyone in the world who is oppressed, oh Allah. Oh Allah, hold accountable those who claim to be acting on behalf of Islam when they are not acting on behalf of our people whatsoever. Oh Allah, please let us be among those who are truthful. Let us be among those who strive for your cause. Let us be among those who spend for your cause and make that the priority, not anything else, oh Allah. Oh Allah, please protect this ummah and this mosque and protect the families of the, this Islamic center, inshallah. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين أقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر. Before praying the sunnah, listen to uh, our brother, who is now president of the Muslim Student Association of USC, Talha Talha Rafiq. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So I'm not a great speaker, so I did write a couple things down. So just ignore me if I look at my phone. Um, so I'm going to start with a quick like, personal story because this makes no sense if you haven't been on the college campuses because the media has not been representing what has been happening accurately um, that well. And since many of you, including myself, like I grew up in this city. I grew up um, in Islamic Center as well. Mr. Adil was my fifth grade math, I'm a fifth grade teacher. I remember growing up here and I remember the support of wanting to get to college in the first place. And now that we're in college, we feel like we have the need to change something in the actual institution that we all strive to be in and wanted to be in in the first place. And that's not a good thing. That's a bad sign, right? That means we have to do something to actually change it. So I'm going to give a quick story. Two days ago, I was at UCLA. Um, that was a night where all the fireworks went off when there were pro-Zionist, um, you know, protesters physically abusing and attacking students. And I was there. And the reason we went is because a few of the UC USC students, when we saw it happening, left at 1 a.m. in the morning in the middle of our finals because there was no medical aid going into UCLA. There were no phys uh, paramedics. There was no nothing. There were no physicians. We took five students who were EMTs, and we went there, and we took our own medical supplies. We raised over $3,000 through social media within one hour, and we did that as students who just realized our fellow brothers in the other MSA were suffering and were being hurt. There were students who were bloody, there were students who were bare maced, there were students who had pepper spray in their eyes, things that you would never imagine happening at your college like campuses, and it happened to us. And that's the reality of the situation right now. So the reason why I'm here today is because we weren't gonna sit by idly and just let this one thing pass by and never do anything about it again. The reality of the situation is we have to create an infrastructure which allows our students to develop the kind of culture where we're talking about advocacy and Palestine and Uyghurs and whatever genocides are occurring around the world, whatever injustices are occurring around the world. And it's now we're told that if we have to like, see an injustice, we have to act with our hands. If you can't act with our hands, we have to act with our tongue. And if you can't act with our tongue, we have to act with our heart. We have to hate that injustice with our heart. Now, all I'm asking is I know many of you here hate that injustice with our heart, but the reason I'm here today is to pitch to you what we are doing as an MSA, as what we're doing as MSAs collectively, so that you might be able to act on with your tongue and whatever you act on with your hands as adults in our community. So in the last week as president of the MSU, we launched an initiative called the MSA Coalition for Palestine. As of now, we have a couple MSAs who have agreed to this coalition, as well as backers like MPAC and MSA West and larger organizations that are supporting the mission. The idea behind it is that we're going to have a collection of individuals who are able to support the MSAs in whatever initiatives they want to follow. There are three main initiatives, there are three main ways you can support. One, just be a part of the newsletter. There's a newsletter that'll be used to disseminate information. What is actually going on at these college campuses? What are your children actually going through? What are your future children potentially going to be encountering, et cetera, et cetera. This takes no money, it takes no effort, it just takes a, just a couple of seconds to read, to gain knowledge in that regard. The second way to be involved is essentially be um, you know, specialized or someone who has a network. So if you have a specialization in a job or you have a network, you have the opportunity to be able to contribute, to contribute those skills to us when needed. So MSAs will be able to voice their opinion. There will be a collective space of communication where individuals from the communities around will be able to help their MSAs. This will be occurring at UC Irvine, it will be occurring at UCLA, USC. These are some of the schools that have already agreed to this coalition. And the third way, of course, is financially. A lot of the times we think that finances you know, they just fly out of the gate and we don't know where they go, right? There's no collective way to actually measure what is the effect of the finances that are being donated. Our goal is essentially to make that transparent. So the money will be used as, as bad as it is to say, the Zionists do it the right way. They put the money into their students, they do programming, they essentially teach their students the way they want them to be taught. 
we haven't had that structure before. We're trying to build that structure now. So if you have the finances to donate, you'll be able to donate to the coalition, which will be allocated to do programming at different colleges. All in all, the end goal and the end result is to set up a continual feedback loop of gaining knowledge when it comes to these kind of things that are occurring in the world. Because the students have started, you know, we, we, we have definitely started in the way of like starting on the front lines, but now it's time to start working up the other way, the institutional manner way, right? And that's where MPAC and all these organizations come in as well. So with that, um, take that first story as you will, take these last three things as you will, but please come, after me, uh, come up after me, uh, come up to me after this, and I'll be in the back over there. Um, I have a couple of cards, I have a couple of info. At the least, I have a Google form that you guys can fill out if you want to be on the newsletter that we'll be sending out. But uh, JazakAllah khair for your time, and um, thank you for staying and listening to my story.